Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. How are you doing today? If you are considering pursuing grad studies, master or PhD, first, congratulations, you made a wonderful decision. Now, for many people, a popular destination is the United States because of the prestige of their universities. And if that is your case too, then now is the right time to start your application. In today's video, we'll make a checklist together of the main things you need to do for an application and how to do them to get your admission to your dream program. Now, as a disclaimer, while I am not enrolled in a US university, I do have experience applying there, and I was even accepted to some prestigious programs, including a Master in Financial Engineering at Columbia University and a PhD in Algorithms, Combinatorics and Optimization at Georgia Tech. Today, we are going to look at each of the elements of your application, and for each one of them, I will give you my best tips to maximize your chances to get in. Now that I am in academia, I know exactly what professors and researchers love, and we will tune your application together so that your prospective advisor gazes at it like Jerry Mouse looks at a piece of cheese. Finally, at the end of this video, I will include a quick checklist of the elements that you need to submit. However, I would like you to be very careful because some universities may have additional requirements and you should always refer to each university's website to have a full list of the documents that you need to submit. Let's jump in. Statement of Purpose. The Statement of Purpose, or SOP, is to the US university application process what dental care is to your health maintenance. Nobody likes it, but you have to go through it. It should be between one and two pages, but the shorter the better. Besides that, no more indication, so let me share with you what you should do. The recruitment process of a university is like going on a date. You have to make them want you. And for that purpose, same as for a date, there are two stages. One, clear the red flags, and two, show the green flags. From an academic perspective, you are a red flag if you may drop out from their program or transfer to another program. So you need to show them that it's not your case. And yes, if you are wondering, that's flattering time on the university program and the prospective lab and advisor. Among others, your prospective advisor's research topic is the most interesting thing in the world and you want to dedicate the next five years of your life to it. But normally you shouldn't have to lie. You chose that lab and advisor because you like their work, but make it clear for them. Naturally, that involves mentioning one or two of their papers, but how do you choose them? First, they should be recent so that they correspond to the latest research interest of your advisor, ideally 2023 or 2024. And since you're going to show your interest in them, they should inspire you at least as much as tonight's dinner menu. Now, I know that before grad school, it's difficult to read research papers, but if that can help, I have explained in 10 minutes some recent research papers on this channel, like this one here. They can definitely help you get familiar with that difficult exercise, so don't hesitate to check them out at the end of this video. The link will be in the description box down below. Next on the red flags list, any element in your dossier that you are not proud of, like repeating a year or having a low grade. Here, you should explain why. Don't hide it, I know it's tempting, but trust me, before taking you for years of master or PhD, they're going to check your application about as much as I check the time when I have insomnia. So instead, take the SOP as a chance to clear those red flags and explain why they happened. Okay, you got a D at physics, but why? It's not the same story if you were partying every night or if you were handling a part-time job to financially support your family. Or maybe you were preparing a national chess competition, in which case you showed determination, dedication and hard work, and your red flag may even turn into an advantage. Now, what if the reason is not so glorious? Well, of course, don't say it, but instead explain why you have changed and why you are not a D student. In short, take the SOP as your chance to explain why your situation cannot be put in a one fit all box. All right, red flags cleared. They won't burn your SOP. Now, why would they accept you among the thousands of other applicants? That's where the green flag section begins. You need to show them that you will be the next Bill Gates or Michel Telegram, the 2024 Apple Prize awardee that I speak about in that video there. Grad school is about research, and you need to show them that your research will change the world. If you're working on a trendy topic, nowadays it's LLMs, tell them that you will push the boundaries of what's possible. You will be the world's crazy top 1%. GPT-10 will be a revolution based on your work. You're working on a less trendy topic? Then you have a perspective nobody else has. Your field will bring a new perspective or improvement that nobody saw before. Of course you will. Any research field, including neural networks, has been overlooked before it bears fruit. And now it's your time. Now, I know that it sounds a wee bit exaggerated, but let me tell you two things. First, 
You don't go to grad school if you don't believe you will be successful. And second, everyone is releasing loads of papers. So if you just say that you will release a few more, that's not gonna get them excited and they won't take you. Final point of consideration, don't lie. They do conduct background checks and besides, there are interviews afterwards so they will spot and eject potential liars. Now that's it for the SOP, which is at least for me one of the most annoying things to write. Now we can move on to the recommendation letters. But before that, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next videos. That really helps the channel. Thank you. Recommendation letters. Let's continue with most students' all-time favorite, the recommendation letters. Favorites, because most students think that recommendation letters do not require any work from their side and all the work is on the recommender's side. <laughs> that couldn't be more wrong. For most US universities, you need at least three recommendation letters and for each one of them, there are three efforts that you need to make. The first one is to find the three recommenders. So since you're applying to academia, university professors are going to be more impactful. As a rule of thumb, at least two of the three letters should come from university professors. Those must have specific things to say about you. This student is very good. Yes, he got an A at your course, so unless you grade your students randomly, this comment is no more useful than asking for no cream in your carbonara pasta in Italy. They want details, anecdotes, like that time when he came up with an innovative proof of cauchy lipschitz theorem or when you program an algorithm in class before anyone else in the room even got started. That brings us to the second effort that you need to make. Speak to your recommenders. Schedule an in-person interview with each one of them and tell them what you want them to write. A professor may have hundreds of students and therefore they won't remember you. So you should refresh their memories since they don't really know what to put in your recommendation. They will be appreciative that you give them some content to write. And don't hesitate to ask them to be very emphatic and even to exaggerate. After you found your recommenders comes effort number three. Regularly check that they uploaded the letter and remind them to do so. Not every day of course, but just make sure that they don't forget. Finally, and probably the most important thing, it is better to have a great recommendation from a hamster than an okay recommendation from a rock star. If you feel that one of your recommenders is hesitant or not sure about it, or it's okay to recommend you but it's a bit shy in the compliments, then don't insist and find somebody else. Otherwise that person may write a poor recommendation and this is the last thing that you want. Exams. As a mandatory step to get into any US university, you need to pass various exams. The first one is the GRE. Actually there's two GREs, the general test and the subject test. In a nutshell, the general test is composed of three sections. Analytical writing, that's an essay. Verbal reasoning, that's a vocabulary and reading test, and quantitative reasoning. Now the quantitative reasoning section is probably the most important one not to miss if you are applying for a program in machine learning, computer science, statistics, and so on. But it's really not so difficult. And if you understand the more technical videos on this channel, like this one up here on Google's PageRank algorithm, then it should be all cinched for you. But again, don't miss your dream program because of a poor GRE score, so I cannot recommend enough to get prepared for it at least to get familiar with test format. Next one on the hit parade, the GRE subject test. This one is not required by all programs, so check out your requirement list carefully. But it is very different from the GRE general test. It only focuses on one subject, like math. Now this is an undergrad level test, so much more advanced than the GRE general test. I personally only took the math one. The questions are not so difficult, but they cover the whole range of undergrad mathematics. So to get prepared for it, I would recommend to review everything without skipping any topic, and you should be fine. Last exam for the non-native English speakers, there is a TOEFL. The most widely accepted one is the internet-based test. On the maximum score of 120 points, most programs require at least 100, some even ask for 110. So prepare carefully and be focused on the day. To conclude with the exams, the GRE scores are valid for five years and the TOEFL scores are valid for two years. So if you already took them, make sure to check if your scores are still valid. In summary, for your application, you need the following. Exams, like the GRE general and subject test, and the TOEFL if you are a non-native language speaker, and now is the right time to start to get prepared for them. An SOP for each of the programs that you are applying to. Recommendation letters, for which you need to find recommenders and meet them in person to tell them how to recommend you. 
and various administrative documents, including your resume and your transcripts. But right, that's it for the checklist to apply for US universities. I know that it may look a bit daunting. The point here is not to intimidate you, but to help you get prepared so that the application to your dream program becomes smooth and successful. If you want more videos of this kind, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will make more of them in the future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon, I would really appreciate. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos for more or less technical content. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week, an amazing success for all your applications and endeavors, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.